Hello and welcome to this channel. In this video, we will talk about diabetic nephropathy. What is diabetic nephropathy? Diabetic nephropathy is a serious complication of long standing diabetes mellitus. It is a progressive kidney disease caused by prolonged hyperglycemia, so high blood sugar levels, in patients with diabetes. Over time, the consistently elevated blood glucose damages the small blood vessels and filters in the kidneys, leading to impairment of their function. The kidneys are responsible for filtering waste products and excess fluids from the blood, which are then excreted in the urine. However, when diabetic nephropathy develops, the kidney's ability to perform this function is compromised and the glomerular filtration barrier is damaged. The glomerular filtration barrier is comprised of the fenestrated endothelium of the blood vessels, the glomerular basement membrane and the podocytes. It is a specialized structure located in the renal corpuscle, which is the initial part of the nephron responsible for filtering the blood and forming urine. The main function of the glomerular filtration barrier is to selectively allow certain substances to pass through while preventing the passage of others, thereby regulating the composition of the filtrate that eventually becomes urine. In diabetic nephropathy, these podocytes undergo changes which are visible with the electron microscope. What are risk factors for the development of diabetic nephropathy? The longer a patient has diabetes, the higher their risk of developing diabetic nephropathy. Prolonged exposure to elevated blood sugar levels can lead to kidney damage over time. Chronic hyperglycemia is a major risk factor for diabetic nephropathy. High blood glucose can directly damage the blood vessels and cells in the kidneys. Also, uncontrolled hypertension is a significant risk factor for the development and progression of diabetic nephropathy. Hypertension can further strain the already compromised kidneys and accelerate kidney damage. A family history of diabetic nephropathy or a genetic predisposition to kidney disease can increase the risk of developing this complication. Smoking can worsen kidney damage in patients with diabetes and increase the risk of developing diabetic nephropathy. Also, individuals with other diabetes-related complications, such as diabetic retinopathy, may have an increased risk of diabetic nephropathy. What are symptoms of diabetic nephropathy? Initially, diabetic nephropathy might not produce noticeable symptoms, but as the disease progresses, it can lead to more severe kidney damage and ultimately to kidney failure, a condition called end-stage renal disease. One of the earliest signs of diabetic nephropathy is the presence of protein in the urine, called proteinuria. Healthy kidneys filter waste products and excess substances from the blood while retaining essential proteins. When the glomerular filtration barrier is damaged, proteins, especially albumin, can leak into the urine, leading to proteinuria. As the kidney function deteriorates, the body may retain fluid, resulting in swelling in the legs, ankles, feet, and sometimes the hands and face. This swelling is known as edema and is caused by the kidney's reduced ability to remove excess fluids from the body. Kidney dysfunction can lead to anemia, a condition characterized by reduced number of red blood cells or a decrease in hemoglobin levels. Anemia can cause fatigue, weakness, and a decreased ability to perform physical activities. Some individuals with diabetic nephropathy may experience an increase in urination, so polyuria, 
or have to wake up frequently during the night to urinate, called nocturia. Proteinuria can cause the urine to appear foamy or frothy due to the presence of excess proteins. As kidney function declines, waste products can accumulate in the bloodstream, leading to a loss of appetite, nausea and vomiting. Some patients with diabetic nephropathy may experience difficulty sleeping due to frequent urination, leg cramps or discomfort caused by edema. How can we diagnose diabetic nephropathy? The diagnosis of diabetic nephropathy involves a combination of medical history, physical examination and various tests to assess kidney function and detect signs of kidney damage. We usually start by taking a detailed medical history, including any history of diabetes and related complications. Here we want to pay special attention to patients that have been diagnosed with diabetes over 10 years ago. We will also inquire about symptoms that may suggest kidney damage, such as edema, changes in urinary patterns and fatigue. During the physical examination, we usually check for signs of fluid retention, high blood pressure and other indicators of kidney problems. We also want to check if the patient is experiencing any other diabetes-related complications, such as diabetic retinopathy or peripheral neuropathy. A routine urinalysis can detect the presence of protein and other abnormalities in the urine, which may indicate kidney damage. Also, a poor urinal sediment is an indicator for diabetic nephropathy. We can also check the albumin to creatinine ratio. This test measures the ratio of albumin, so a type of protein, to creatinine in a random urine sample. It helps to assess the amount of protein that is leaking into the urine and provides us with an early indicator of kidney damage. In the blood, we can measure the serum creatinine. This is a blood test to measure serum creatinine levels, which is a waste product from muscle metabolism. Elevated levels of serum creatinine may suggest impaired kidney function. We can also estimate the glomerular filtration rate. By using the serum creatinine level, the age, gender and other factors and the eGFR is then calculated to estimate the kidney's filtering capacity. A lower eGFR indicates a reduced kidney function. We also usually obtain a sonographic image of the kidneys. Indicators for diabetic nephropathy are nephromegaly, so a larger than normal kidney, a renal parenchyma that appears thickened, with a diameter of around 2 to 2.5 cm and the increased echogenicity of the parenchyma. In some situations, a kidney biopsy may be recommended to obtain a small tissue sample from the kidney for a more detailed examination. This is typically done when the cause of kidney disease is uncertain or when treatment decisions are challenging. This can be the case if we for example suspect that a patient may have diabetic nephropathy together with another kidney disease. It is possible that a patient has for example diabetic nephropathy and membranous glomerulonephritis which would have to be treated with antibiotics. Indicators for the necessity of a renal biopsy are the presence of increasing proteinuria, a diabetes diagnosis that is not yet 10 years ago, and a lack of diabetic retinopathy, as this usually develops before the onset of diabetic nephropathy. In the light microscopy, we can see changes, such as a diffuse and uniform thickening of the glomerular basement membrane, the expansion of the matrix, and segmental glomerulonecrosis. Also, the papillae of the kidneys often undergo necrosis and the tubules undergo atrophy. 
A typical change in diabetic nephropathy is also the kimmelstiel wilson bodies that can be seen as a vascular hyalinosis. What are the phases of diabetic nephropathy? Diabetic nephropathy is a progressive kidney disease that develops in patients with diabetes over time. It typically occurs in five phases, each representing different stages of kidney damage. The first phase is the hyperfiltration phase. In this early stage, the kidney's filtration rate increases as a response to elevated blood glucose levels. There is no obvious symptoms or signs of kidney damage during this phase. The eGFR is typically above 120 milliliters per minute, so higher than normal. Phase 2 is the intermittent microalbuminuria phase. In this phase, small amounts of albumin begin to leak into the urine. This is a crucial early sign of kidney damage. The levels of albumin vary and are not consistently elevated. Phase 3 is the overt proteinuria. At this stage, kidney damage worsens, leading to significant amounts of protein leaking into the urine. In this stage, the microalbuminuria is usually found at levels between 30 and 300 mg per liter. The phase 4 is a decline in kidney function or nephropathy. As diabetic nephropathy progresses, the kidney's ability to filter blood declines further, leading to a decrease in the glomerular filtration rate. This phase is marked by significant decline in kidney function and symptoms such as fatigue, weakness, anemia and electrolyte imbalances, which may become more pronounced. In this phase, patients also usually have a constantly high proteinuria with over 300 mg per liter. Proteinuria over 300 mg per day is considered a key diagnostic criterion for diabetic nephropathy. Symptoms such as foamy urine, edema and hypertension may become evident. Phase 5 is end-stage renal disease. The final phase of diabetic nephropathy is end-stage renal disease. At this stage, the kidneys have lost almost all of their function and the patient requires renal replacement therapy, such as dialysis or kidney transplantation. How do we treat diabetic nephropathy? The treatment of diabetic nephropathy aims to slow down the progression of kidney damage, to manage symptoms and to prevent complications. The treatment plan may include a combination of lifestyle changes medications and close monitoring. Maintaining good blood sugar control is critical in managing diabetic nephropathy. This involves following a healthy diet, engaging in regular physical activity and taking diabetes medication, like for example insulin, as prescribed by the doctor. Proper blood glucose management can help to slow down the progression of kidney damage. Also, controlling hypertension is essential in slowing the progression of diabetic nephropathy. Medications such as angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers are commonly prescribed to help lower blood pressure and protect the kidneys from further damage. Our goal is usually to lower the blood pressure to below 140 to 90 mm mercury. Reducing dietary protein intake may also be recommended to lessen the workload on the kidneys. We generally recommend to intake below 0.8 gram of protein per kilogram of body weight. The low protein diet reduces the hyperfiltration from phase 1 of diabetic nephropathy. If cholesterol levels are elevated, medication and lifestyle changes may be recommended to control cholesterol levels, which can help to protect the kidneys and cardiovascular health. That's it for this video, I hope it was helpful, thank you for watching and hopefully see you again in the next video.